So now we are going to start this session on stress management, mindfulness and positive psychology. I am Dr. Vinay Seni and welcome you all on behalf of Tomas Foundation, IIT Bombay and, and Registrar Office and PDD Cell. Today's session is based out of the stress management, mindfulness and positive psychology. So eminent speaker is Dr. Rajan Barbe sir here and he will be giving you uh, some steps, uh, the lecture or session will be summarized in different steps using the video and also movies, short movies along with the uh, some directions will be given to all of you. Apart from this, after the concluding remark of this session, all of you will be invited for the feedback about the uh, session and you, if you have any personal query, then you can actually mention your name and address behind the slip or receipt of that paper. Otherwise, we are going to actually organize this session and feedback session we will take. We will take feedback only, anonymous feedback will be giving. Only person who are really wishes to actually interact and is in need of the something else regarding the stress management and other things, they, they are invited and they are welcome to interact with sir and uh, we will actually figure out and uh, arrange another meeting after some time or maybe next week. So we are, there is a plan to actually organize the session every month, once in a month or fortnightly. Uh, so the session is based out of the stress management and you know the people are actually sparing most of the time in laptops and the life is more sedentary at this new, uh, during this time period. After COVID pandemic, we got to know and we realized that uh, the stress and uh, what we can say, uh, stress and also our eyesight are going to be actually weakened. So this way we need to actually improve all these things and how we can actually do the positive psychology and work on the on all these things we will be working. So uh, we are, I am basically from uh, Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering. I am working as a senior scientist for last five years. Parallelly I am running, uh, we are running a startup company with Austic Pharma which is incubated with Shine IIT Bombay. And for social activity and social innovations, we are actually running Tomas. Tomas is the foundation for tuberculosis, malnutrition and AIDS. So this, so basically we have actually in last three, more than three years, we have organized several awareness talks on tuberculosis and also we donated COVID test, whatever the test we developed in our company in Austic Pharma to the, to the IIT Bombay hospital and other hospitals in different Northeast states and Madhya Pradesh. Apart from this, we actually donated arsenic album very few of them are aware about. So we distributed arsenic, arsenic album during COVID pandemic, during first wave of the COVID. And last year we organized a session uh, which was delivered by Dr. Rajan Nanavare for free treatment and consultancy for tuberculosis. So this way we are going to organize this session and this will be helpful and hopefully all of you will enjoy this session and I invite Honorable Registrar Sir to facilitate Dr. Rajan Barve Sir and after this, Dr. Rajan Barve sir will start the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you very much. My pleasure. शुरू करने से पहले एक बात आप लोगों को कहना चाहूँगा। ये ट्रेनिंग मैंने अटेंड किया है। इसके पहले एक बार एक बार नहीं ही बहुत बार अटेंड किया है। और यही ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम है जो आपको एक सामान्य एम्प्लाई से या सामान्य आदमी से विशेष � यही कारण यही ट्रेनिंग है जो हमें पहले जब किस तरह से हम काम करते थे 2003 से मैंने ये शुरू किया है ये तो तीन से हम इस तरह के ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम अटेंड करते हैं जो स्ट्रेस मैनेजमेंट पर है पहले क्या था हमारा बिहेवियर और आज क्या है इस ट्रेनिंग को सिर्फ आपको सुनना नहीं है सिर्फ सुनने और एक होने के बाद अगर आपने छोड़ दिया जैसे थे हो जाएगा आपको इसे फॉलो करना है आप, आपको इसे आपके व्यवहार में लाना है तब तक इस ट्रेनिंग का कोई फायदा नहीं होगा ऑल द बेस्ट ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड वेलकम टू प्रोफेसर बर्वे अगेन आफ्टर लॉन्ग गैप आई एम सीइंग हिम थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच प्रिस्टा सर एंड माय डियर फ्रेंड विनय इट्स प्लेजर टू बी हियर विद ऑल ऑफ यू एंड इंटरेक्ट विथ यू uh, on various topics that uh, Vinay suggested, stress management, positive psychology, mindfulness, all are in one basket. It's all under one umbrella. 
that you will have so many uh, in, inputs that we give to have better life, to have more positive life, which is more productive, which is not only uh, give enhances your performance, but gives you that sense of peace that I'm here, I want to enjoy my life because stress very simply does what? It reduces your sense of intimacy. You can't be any more emotionally react and bond with people. Your productivity goes down, your efficiency goes down, your quality goes down. You may work this, the output may be same, but the efforts that you need to put in are very high. So all our engineers here, I don't have to talk about how efficiency really matters in life. With minimum energy, with maximum output we get, then it's really what matters. And for that, what we require is that focus. How effectively you focus. Because what stress does is that it just takes away the focus. You get distracted very easily. So what I suggest is please come and occupy seats now. Anyway, I would like uh, quite a few people here now. I would like you to engage because 4 o'clock is actually tea time, coffee time. And uh, coffee has not been provided so far. Maybe next time we'll have coffee, which is an energizer. Uh, we want to do a, a small exercise so that, uh, you know, all of you become uh, participants and not just spectators. Because if you are just listening, this AC is very good. After a while, you know, uh, you may not be aware of the Newton's fourth law of motion. We are all taught three laws, right? Three laws of motion. Is the fourth law of motion. I don't know. Engineers should know fourth law of motion. Very simple, Newton's fourth law of motion. Anything which is heavy falls down. And some ignorant people call it sleep. <laughs> so that fourth law of motion comes into play like this, particularly in this very sonorous atmosphere. And I don't, I speak very evenly. So it's a very soporific effect on people. I want people to be awake. Of course, you're all alive, but awake and not, awake and not kicking, but just let's start being awake. So I'm going to ask you and all, you, all of you are coming from IIT, uh, Premier Institute, Cream de la Cream, and all are very good in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I am a, I'm from the field of biology, basically, humanities. I'm a doctor. So my best day in my life was when I gave my maths paper. Happiest day. If people ask me in interviews, which is the happiest day, the day I put down my maths. This is over in my life, you know. This is over. So I'm from that field, so I would like you to contribute in a big way. I'm going to ask you a very simple thing to do. And that simple thing is I'm going to ask you to count numbers, not loudly, but in your own mind. And when I say start, you'll start counting backwards. That's the only thing, you know. Start counting backwards, 100 backwards. 100, 99, 98, 90, that much maths I know, yeah, right? 97, 96, etc. And go back, and when I say stop, you need to stop and very honestly write the number on the paper. Right? All of you will have paper, right? So paper, pen, keep ready, and your mobiles can go on silent. Okay, keep the paper and pen ready. I'm going to do this couple of times. That means you need to count backwards, 100 backwards. When I say start, start counting backwards. You don't have to write numbers, you know, it takes time. Count backwards in your own mind. Stop, write the number, okay? Then I'll say again. Again, go back to 100 and count backwards. Every time I say start, start from 100 backwards, right? Very simple, not really, not really a rocket science, very simple, okay? When I'll do it a couple of times and then, then I'm going to ask you very simple questions. I would like you to answer and when you write the answers, you have to look in here. The brightest point in this class is here, right? So you have to look there. It's, he said, this is going to be hypnosis. I said, yes, kind of hypnosis, okay? So are you all ready, paper, pen, ready? Okay, anyone doesn't have paper, pen, or paper you can write? Aap to haath par bhi likh sakte, dil par mat likhiye. Not on the mobile, not on the mobile, please. Dil ke kitab par likhna to gana bhi na hota hai, to aap sirf haath se likhiye, not on mobile, please. And don't count also on mobile, you know. Are you all ready at the back? 
back benches are you ready paper pen keep the paper you know with you so that it makes sense okay we have to start now okay 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 anyone who doesn't have a paper and pen okay fine chill when i say start start counting backwards 100 backwards okay when i say stop stop and write that number on the paper okay when i say start again again you have to count back from 100 stop write the number again 100 back okay so let's start start stop write the number write the number that you have in mind last number okay anyone below 90 line sir okay anyone below 80 it oh yes ma'am it's zero okay so 89 okay very close anyone below 80 between 80 and 90 no between 80 and 90 okay below 80 only one okay fine so ready now start stop write your number below 80 below 70 below 70 yes please 69 70 anyone below 69 yes sir 60 75 anyone 6 64 okay anyone below 64 60 you said somebody said 60 okay anyone below 60 no okay start stop below 60 okay below 50 below 50 50 below 50 yes 40 yes 32 anyone below 32 okay okay now it starts i'll ask you to count numbers you'll continue counting numbers but i'll ask you three questions reasonably simple no rocket science right nothing like uh, science or something no very simple questions only thing is that you have to count numbers continuously and write answers you can stop counting and write answers got it continue counting and write answers continue counting write answers right and no copy paste look at me right no copy paste look at me okay very easy so we'll start start count backwards 100 backwards right name of a color continue counting name of a flower continue counting piece of furniture stop counting right number okay now let's see who is below 50 below 40 below 40 yes ma'am 10 39 anyone below 10 22 okay anyone below 10 yes sir no 10 10 10 okay how many of you have written red how many of you written rose Wait, wait, wait! I'll come to you. How many have written chair? Now this is the effect of studying STEM. You might wonder how is that some people may have written pink? Yeah, 
some people may have written uh, what lotus okay that's a political answer, okay. that shows your politics you know saffron i don't think anyone has written nobody has written chrysanthemum nobody wrote turquoise blue nobody wrote that nobody said so the students are here they should have written bed actually that's yeah okay that's a favorite place so what what happened here can you tell me because we are talking about stress and i just asked you to do a weird thing like counting numbers and then i almost guessed your your answers almost right rose being the commonest why did this happen how is that your answer was so predictable what happened you can answer it's a participating session so actually you given the other way okay give more answers sir yes please no right and wrong answer please smart anyway and you want to build on that yeah but you are focused on counting number you are making good guess yes anyone else You build on, build on this, build on this. Good hands, yes. Yeah, that's that's a very common answer. But actually, this is an afterthought. You didn't say purple, P U R P L E. You know, it's not four, six answers, six letters. Who will write? Let me write red three letters. We didn't do that. Okay, that's an afterthought. Smart, but afterthought. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe. Come again. How? Oh <laughs> no! There is no data in my mobile. No, please, no data. I have done this so many times. Yeah. Okay. You are getting close. Yes, there, boy. Uh huh. She said that. Okay. Very good answer. Very good answer. Anyone wants to build on that? Yeah, please write it then loudly. Okay, we couldn't be creative. Yes. Yes, yeah, smart answer. ये बहुत सोच सोच के निकाला answer. Yes, please. Oh yeah, now you are getting close. you are getting close yes please oh i have done this in dark rooms also you know it's dark nobody can see still there i tell you the real answer is there are quite a few answers in fact answer number 1 is uh, i created a sense of competitiveness actually counting number backwards is not such a great thing i mean it's not going to be the reward you as you know you know your index is not going to be high if you write something else still you got into a competitive mode without you realizing either you are competing with yourself or you are competing with people you know i did that with jesh even below 50 oh god he wants us to be on the lower side it's i created that sense that you need to count faster and faster and faster when i never wanted you to count faster i just wanted you to count numbers you assume that you need to count faster you assume that just by asking you to count numbers backwards which is a very ordinary very routine thing i mean you don't count that way but you can count i mean you do more complex work than that so what happened is that you got into that competitive answer number 1 answer number 2 is what when you are doing this competitive work and the work is simple you get into what is known as autopilot mode you don't have to think you just have to count number backwards 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 faster and faster and faster in a competitive way and you easily turn into a counting robot 
without you realizing it. And the robo has not been fed with this information that you can make a choice of your color, flower, or anything. This has not been programmed. No algorithm was written. I wrote the algorithm there. Standing there, I created autopilots and they would write these names and I will guess red, rose, and chair. Now, why red and why rose and why chair? I have not been able to find out. Frankly, this comes as the right answer. But the reason is more sensible than the answer. So question is always smarter than answers. Answers are going to change every day. So the question is that how suddenly we can get into an autopilot mode. And this is the story of stress. Any one of you have heard a word called VUCA world? Please raise hands. VUCA world. V-U-C-A. VUCA world. Not psychology, right? VUCA. Okay. VUCA. Anyone else has heard about VUCA? V-U-C-A, okay. What is V-U-C-A word? This is an old terminology, though new here. It's an old terminology. It means what? V-U-C-A. And you will say, oh God, it's real true. I mean, that's what is happening in the world today. It's a world which is very volatile. It can also turn violent any minute. So V stands for that volatility. The things were not changing and things have started changing very fast. So V stands for volatility in the world and you see the situation politically also. Second is U, U stands for uncertainty. This uncertainty happened here because you walked in, you walked in for a session on stress management you know, positive psychology, here this guy talks about numbers and what is this? Uncertainty. It is an uncertain world. It's something world which is difficult to predict. Volatility, unpredictability. T stands for complexity. It has become really very complex world. We really don't know how things are changing, at what speed they are changing and why they are changing. Things are made in a second and they can drop next second. Nobody thought that Canada will explode like this. And the reasons now if I start reading, they did it back to 1980. What a complex situation. We never thought, we just thought it's a It goes back. It is so complex. We don't know how they're going to solve it. And fourth letter is A. Sorry, A. A stands for ambiguity. Ambiguity is a confused state. We don't know what to do. Yes or no. This or that. So this can be very, you know, Americans are smart people. They just created this ambiguity. Which is better, Coca-Cola or Pepsi? They spent millions of dollars. <laughs> just to check people whether they like Pepsi or both are useless anyway. But the people preferred Pepsi because it was supposed to be sweeter. But still people have come, this or that. Ordinary things. But we have become ambivalent and ambiguous. So this is the VUCA world in which we are living. And this VUCA is there everywhere. Only we didn't know it. We had not coined the phrase VUCA. The VUCA phrase was coined as a post-Cold War. Because there, when this world is bipolar, this or that, it's very easy to predict. Now the world is not bipolar anymore. Unipolar, multipolar, we really don't know. So we really don't know who our enemies could be, who are our friends today. How can you predict? Because it can change every minute. So in this VUCA world, stress is the commonest thing what binds people together. And how will you handle stress? Go back to the same four letters. And if you understand that, I think your job is done. Let's take every letter. V-U-C-A. V standing for? 
vision, volatility will stand for vision. V will stand for vision now. Yes, it is volatile, but what is my vision? What is the vision of the institute? What is the vision where I'm working? What is the vision of my family? How I want to see myself five years down the line, 10 years down the line? How we want to see the world 10 years down the line, five years down the line? What is my vision? That vision exercise is very important. So we will stand for vision because vision is something that you have created and that will not be volatile because you created it for yourself. You have given thought to it. Soch soch ke bana hai. You hi nahi, bazaar mein nahi milega. Mere ek vision de do. Sasta hai. No, you have to create it. And once you create it, you hold on to it because that will give you stability. Second is uncertainty. If things are very uncertain, what is certain then? What is certain then? The certain thing is the values that you want to hold. The value of humanity, value of respecting human life, respecting yourself, respecting your fellow people, respecting your colleagues, your friends, your family. That's the value. This is my value, shared perhaps. There is no uncertainty about it. It's very certain. These are my values and I hold on to them. We stand for it. Complex, because we are vision is too broad. We can focus and focus on this moment. What happens the complexity is because you are, you are looking too wide too wide lens. There is no focus. When you focus, things are not complex. They become reasonably simple. You get clarity. Clarity of vision. Ask this man who is shooting. He wants a clear picture. That is possible only if his camera is steady. Simple. So that clarity is important. And last a, which is about ambivalence, ambiguity, is agility. Agility is flexibility, being able to respond to situations. I have deliberately used a word, verb, deliberately used a verb called respond to situation. And we talk of mindfulness, we are not talking about response, we are not talking about res we are talking about response, not reaction. Reaction is red row chair. That is reaction. Response is what you think and you give. Between the situation outside and you, there is something in between. That is your conscious. You decide. Very simplified. Mobile, when earlier there were SMSs, they used to provide templates, you know. I'm busy, you know, you're not busy, but you don't say, I'm in a meeting. God, what meetings are there? I don't know. I'm in a meeting. Call him, I'm in a meeting. You've been the loo after all. So, I'm in a meeting. I'm driving. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And last was what? Customize. If you want to know what is response and what is reaction, reaction is a template. A response is what you create. Response is what you want. Response is a thought over thing. Based on your vision. Based on your value. Based on your clarity. You respond. You don't react. Can you give an example? Yeah, I'll, I'll give. There's several examples are going to come. So the VUCA has to be turned into a reverse. No more volatility. Volatility will be there as an individual vision, values, certainty, clarity, response. And if you want to turn VUCA, one VUCA into second VUCA, the real VUCA, you require a tool. You require something with which you can turn it around. Right? You can turn it around. You require leverage of something. And what is the leverage? The leverage is mindfulness. Leverage is positive psychology. How do you
turn A into B, you require a catalyst or require some chemical reaction to take place. That is mindfulness. And that mindfulness is what really is the a very important revolution which has taken place in the medical world. Medical world has seen several, several revolutions. A revolution of an antibiotic, a revolution. Penicillin was a, a revolution. Sepsis, antisepsis in surgical theaters, sepsis, antisepsis, so that there is no infection. Vaccination, you know it, you know the story of vaccination, is a revolution. It changed the face of the world. And what is going to change the face of the world is mindfulness. Because mindfulness makes you aware of what you are. I'm going to ask you a very simple question. Where are you now? Here or elsewhere? Here. here. Very feeble. Are you here? Yes, sir. Are you here? Say yes loudly. Are you here? Yes. Because you know what, the most uncertain, most unstable thing in the world is your own mind. It can be here, this second, fraction of a second it will go out. Fra you just have to do nothing, just wanders, wanders all the time. And this wandering mind is not something new. In Bhagavad Gita, in the first Adhyaya, Vishada Yoga, Arjun talks about Brahmati Chame Manaha. He says, Brahmati Chame Manaha. I am here on this battleground. I have come with a clear idea that I am going to fight a war, a battle here. Everything has failed now. It has come to this. You reach that place and suddenly you say, Oh, I don't know what to do. That is also Vuka. So he says, Brahmati Chame Mana. So mind wanders and we say a very simple thing. Wandering mind is unhappy mind. Wandering mind is unhappy because it wanders maybe in happy state. You may find happy pastures where you are wandering. You are going to be where you want to be. You are there. It may be anywhere. And a fraction of a second, you come back and say, oh my God, shit, where was I? And where am I now? Or you may be back regretting something, something that you should not have done, and your mind is still there and not in the present. So wandering mind may seem to be a happy mind. Actually, wandering mind, when it comes back, finds unhappiness. So the most difficult task in the world is to steady the mind. And only a steady mind can give a response. Very simple. Suppose I have a fight with my friend. Suppose I have a fight with my friend Vinay. I owed him some money and Vinay promised that today he'll return the money. He comes and says, oh sorry, I can't give you the money. I am so angry. I am so angry. I am so upset. That before I know, I have already slapped him. And he is terrified by that action because he never expected it from me. And the next moment I say, sorry Vinay. And he says, no, no, actually something happened which was very realistic. And I say sorry to him, but the arrow already has hit him. Why? Because I reacted, not responded. No, I am every reason for me to be angry. Every reason for me to be angry. Understand? Every reason for me to be angry. But does it mean that I have to respond to that? I can stop, think over, say something and not react impulsively. So reactions are impulsive. Some reactions appear to be impulsive, but they are actually spontaneous. Yeah, like Wordsworth talks about spontaneous overflow of my, you know, pleasant memories. Right? 
spontaneous overflow. When the daffodils flash from the inner eye, which is a bliss of solitude. That is spontaneous. That's a react, that's a response. He gives to something and he writes poetry. So reaction to response is the real story. And how do you bridge this? What is the very important thing about mindfulness? Let's do a small experiment. Uh, how many passes did you count? 15? 15. 16? 20? Abhi ye red row chair mat karo iska. How many of you saw the gorilla? Huh? Huh? Some of you didn't see? Some of you didn't see? Let's raise hands how many really saw. Ah, you want to see that again? Those who didn't see gorilla, just do the same play, play. Actually, the numbers, how many passes are not important. See what he does. Okay, stop. So everyone saw the gorilla? Okay, the monkey business. Okay, let's do, let's do one more thing. Yeah, let's see. So, how many passes? 16. Everyone saw gorilla? Everyone saw gorilla? Raise hands. Okay. How many did see the change of the, the color of the screen change? Color of the screen change. Okay. Did you notice that one player actually walked out? How many? No, no, no. How many saw? I said about 20, 40 percent people. 60 percent didn't see it. You didn't see it. You want to see it again? Quick, yeah. See when the player walks out. Screen color. And the player walked out, right? Let me ask you a question. What was this all about? Mindfulness. Okay. Okay, what was this all about? At the back. Awareness. Very good. Wonderful. 
ऑब्जर्वेशन ओके वॉट डू थिंक पहले आंसर करेक्ट कर दिया कॉन्सेंट्रेशन फोकस ओके फोकस फोकस यस वर्किंग मेमोरी ओके मल्टी टास्किंग ओके मल्टी टास्किंग फाइन आई वॉन्ट टू इंट्रोड्यूस टू वर्ड हियर somebody has already introduced that word something called attention and something called awareness attention is what you are doing actually now like you are counting the passes okay and when you are concentrating on something there is something which is happening at the background right at the background and that is awareness a very simple thing but something which is mastered by not human beings but by animal world when when an animal is drinking at a water hole is focused on drinking water but his mind is who is going to kill me now the predator so they are blessed with this attention and awareness awareness about what is happening around the attention is focused to one point focus is the right word so as i said animals are blessed because they are much smarter than us why because they are really living in the wild world and for them awareness is directly connected to survival in the jungle there is only one law eat and don't get eaten up find a prey and don't become a prey simple in human life things have changed remarkably because the attention itself is very become distracted very easily distract because of the wandering mind and awareness has kind of shrunk because we are in a very reasonably very safe world right though in a bhooka world we are reasonably safe right now there is no tiger going to come this is going to be maybe you are afraid the lights may go off or something but by and large awareness for us is essentially only what's happening in this immediate vicinity and where you are relevant you are suppose you are eating in a restaurant you are talking with friends suddenly somebody says hi vinay and say, ah who is that so mind immediately goes there that is awareness but what animals don't have and what we have is a high degree of not awareness but something more than awareness that is known as meta awareness what is that meta awareness is simple awareness of awareness we are the only people in the world who can become aware know that i am aware and if i am not aware i can create awareness again inside me that means higher degree of awareness so it's called meta awareness this meta awareness has given tremendous power to us to focus refocus learn unlearn relearn this meta awareness is what mindfulness is all about it gives me awareness it tells me that i'm aware and also that i'm aware i'm aware that i'm aware and what we become aware of is what mindfulness is all about. are you are you am i connecting the dots we started with uh, counting numbers red row chair right and then i talked about autopilot and i said this is a voluntary you can say something somebody said creative very true both are good in a way you know when i am talking to management students i tell them if you write red row chair don't be disheartened because you know what when i was a child we had ari milk colony bottles used to come some people may know here आरे मिल्क कॉलेज सुबह ऐसा ऐसा करके बॉटल देने का और नया लेने का वन बॉटल इज एग्जैक्टली लाइक द अदर वन यू कॉन्ट डिस्टिंग वर्ल्ड रिक्वायर्स आरे मिल्क बॉटल्स वर्क ऑल्सो रिक्वायर्स अ शैम्पेन बॉटल 
world also requires a wine bottle. It also requires a perfume bottle, which is very special. And when I'm in IIT, I'm talking about not RA milk bottle. I'm talking about highly special brains. So that ability to identify your quality is important. That was not, that got carried away in the competitiveness. That's why I want to talk about it. Then we shifted to this attention, concentration, and awareness. So let's do some exercise on awareness. And then let's see what really changes our awareness. Okay. So uh, let's do a very simple exercise of awareness, which is known as grounding. What is grounding? Grounding is where you are now. Like I asked you, where are you? I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Okay. So where are you? I'm here. How will you know you're here? Only when you touch the base. Touch the base. Right? So let's do a very quick exercise on touch the base known as grounding. Very simple. But the moment you start doing it, you will become aware that mind does not stay there. It waters quickly goes elsewhere. So try to bring it back to that awareness level. I would like you to be aware of yourself starting from your feet, right? So I request you, all of you sit straight. Sit straight, your feet on the ground. If you want to take off your shoes, good enough. I like that. Just bare feet. Touch the floor. Touch the floor. Very important. And I'll tell you why. Touch the floor. And it's a nice floor. Now, when you do that, just touch your feet. Touch your feet completely. Okay. And your spine should be erect. Sit upright, not uptight. Upright is sitting upright. This is upright. So upright, sitting upright. So just respect your curvature of your spine, right? Simple. Sit upright. Take long, deep breath, easy, comfortable, nice breath. Just breathe in and breathe out easily. And when I ring the gong, when I ring the gong, let your mind go to your feet. Your eyes will close. And you'll feel just the breath and your feet. So keep on taking easy, comfortable breaths. And when the gong goes, bring your mind completely to the feet. And feel your feet. The surface of the carpet, which is rough. The temperature is easy, comfortable to your feet. Your breath is very gentle and your feet are firmly on the ground. Feet on the ground. Surface of the carpet is felt by the sole of your feet. And your life, your body, is just only the feet. Very firm. And the feet give you stability. They give you power to stand up and hold your ground. Let your mind be in the feet. Let your mind be in the feet. The touch, the temperature, the solidness of the floor. Feel it. You may find that your mind wanders, 
wondering how long this will go on. What is this all about? Just let that thought be there. That thought will pass. If you refocus your mind on the feet, the thought passes. You will experience your body only through your feet. You are fully aware of the feet. They give you ground to stand, ground to sit, and hold your position. If the mind wanders, just bring it back to the feet, firm on the ground, and the mind will follow you. The mind loves to follow. The mind loves where body is. Mind and body. Body is where mind belongs. Body is the abode of mind. If mind wanders away from the body, bring it back at your feet with you. Very gently, with love, bring it back and feel it. Okay. And again, I'll ring the gong. You can slowly relax, rub your palms, long deeper breaths, warm up your face, warm up your eyebrows, feel the warmth of your palms. Actually, it is that simple. Actually, it is that simple. Because mind, even it wanders, it has to come back to the body. Where will it go? It can't go anywhere. Because mind and body are very artificial divisions. Mind and body are two... We believe they're as if they're two separate entities, but they're not. Mind and body is one and the same. Mind is an operating system of the brain. Now, can you separate operating system of the brain from the hardware? You can't. It will be where it is. That means once you realize that mind plays games, goes wandering, and comes back, it is at home. One of my, one of the participants said, she just caught up and said, we women know it better than men. I said, thank you very much. So how is that? She said, when we go home, to my mother's place, I am most at peace. That is where I belong. That is where I belong. This may not be true for every woman. But the idea is that this is where I belong. So mind has to be trained to come back. It's an appeal to come back. Come back here, come back here, come back and come be with me. This is what the body says, come back here. For many, many years, people thought mind is nothing else but the function of the heart. 
you know, function of the heart. Even if now you say, what is your name? I point over to the left side of the chest. What is your name? I don't say, what is your name? I say, what is your name? I don't do that. I don't say, my name is this. You know, if I say that, you'll say, yeah, I know you are a psychiatrist. What else can you, well, we expect that funny thing from you. So the brain is the real function of the mind. And this is very, very important. So mindfulness is about this awareness. Now the word mindfulness actually is derived from Buddhist principles. It has been sanitized, it has been secularized and brought into science. But actually, it's from the Buddhist uh, 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 philosophy. It is supposed to be the seventh step of the eight Ashtanga Marga, the fourth Arya Satya. And this is the seventh step. It's not in the hierarchical order, it's the seventh step in. Uh, Ashtanga Marga. The original word for it is Samma Sati. Samma Sati. I am going to talk a little more about it in a moment. Let me tell you why. Because I am not fully convinced of the word mindfulness. It truly doesn't translate what he meant by Samma Sati. But it has become a common usage, so we just call it mindfulness. It was coined in 1885 by a Scottish couple called Davis. They translated Pali text into English. So this is how they gave the word mindfulness. The original term, term is Samma Sati. Samma is, Samma means Samyak. Samyak means inclusive, right one, comprehensive. And what is Sati? Sati is Pali word for a Shruti. And Shruti is what? Shruti is memory. Shruti is memory. So comprehensive memory. Memory of what? Because memory then was basically what you heard. Simple. It was only oral tradition. Buddha's thoughts were written 300 years later. Till then it was only oral tradition. So all knowledge was supposed to be Shruti. So the Shruti is what is there inside you. Then what is Sammasati? Is to know that you know. Remember I talked about meta-awareness? To know that you know, that means you are aware that you are aware. So in Sammasati you become fully aware of what you really are. And when you know what you are, you are aware of yourself and you respond, respond from your knowledge, from your attitude, from your consciousness. That means you are present in the moment. Remember, as a child, I was told by my mother, remember, we are going to have guests today, so don't do your monkey business that you always do. Remember how to behave when guests are around. What does it mean? She knew that I know how to behave when guests are around, but I may not behave. So it tells me what? Remember to behave the right way when there are guests. Mothers know mindfulness very well. They tell the child, remember where you are. Remember where you are because they have given them the right knowledge. So remembering it is very important. And that remembering is again, is, is again coming back to what you truly are. Your vision, again go back, again your vision, again your values, your clarity and your flexibility. So mindfulness is become, I told you, stress. So mindfulness about stress is being aware. And what are you aware of under stress? What are you aware of under stress? Because when you are under stress, your body reacts. The brain reacts. We know the brain reacts. Most of you will be familiar with these two words, flight or fight. Very simple, flight or fight. You know, the predator around like a caveman, you step out of your cave. Early morning, you hear rustle of the grass 
and you think it's a tiger and if it's a tiger you have to run away if it's a hare or a rabbit or something you run catch and eat if the tiger will eat you or you eat the hare so only two reactions were given fight or flight and in this vuka world fight and fright are too simplistic they are too simplistic everyone sitting here must have said sometime or the other bahut ho gaya jhanjhat abhi nahi chahiye mujhko feel like running away now to give up everything everyone has said it sometime or the other but we can neither fight nor take a flight so we get frozen and we are in a fearful state this fight and flight is a reaction of the human body not human body an amoeba single cell no brain also finds a spore around itself when the situation is not favorable this is what we do so we either fight or flight that is a sympathetic response which does many many things of which many of us may be suffering now hopefully not suffer in the future young people around the sympathetic overactivity is the cause of most of the diseases that we suffer from today they are really diseases and disease both disease all the psychosomatic disorders all that people are talking about is diabetes high blood pressure arthritis headaches migraines all are connected to the sympathetic activity and what has changed now this is a protective it gives rise to steroid it gives rise to norepinephrine which bucks you up and allows you to fight or flight wonderful it's a blessing of the nature to us which we are overdoing it we are exhausting ourselves it's like people keep on doing this games or they keep on taking weed dopamine goes up and up and up and then suddenly falls and you don't know what to do so it goes up and up doesn't know how to come down and you have all these disorders so what do we do if there is a sympathetic system the nature has also given something else to us known as parasympathetic system basically sympathetic system doesn't mean being sympathetic or anything no There's nothing to do with sympathy it's just sympa you know this they named everything in physiology and anatomy based on what the greeks and latin you know if there is no greek latin word they say it didn't exist there is a greek name nahi hoga to ho hi nahi sakta anyway so sympathetic and there is something which is runs parallel so it is parasympathetic now parasympathetic system is what it counterbalances the sympathetic it counterbalances the sympathetic with one single nerve one single nerve which starts right from your brain and goes around and spreads everywhere inside the body is known as vagus nerve why i'm giving you all these words because tomorrow you are going to google it even some of you may be googling it now vagus nerve v a g u s vagus vagus is comes from from where vagabond comes you know vagabond vagabond is bhatakne wala so vagus is like that it wanders everywhere in the body and it does what it counterbalances sympathetic says we are going up i'll pull you down and let's be friends and remain stable and that stability should be more towards parasympathetic than sympathetic so let's be little more parasympathetic oriented than sympathetic oriented why because the name like sympathetic system known as fight and flight well the parasympathetic system is known as rest and digest rest and digest that means calm down so in other words calm and connect rest and digest calm and connect and you know what i have already taught you vagus nerve i just gave you a demonstration of vagus nerve few minutes back when you did the exercise of breathing you were actually training your vagus nerve because vagus nerve manages your breathing out parasympathetic 
allows you to breathe out and when you focus on breathing out it becomes longer your parasympathetic system is stimulated, counterbalances and makes you feel calm and connects to yourself. And then we stop reacting and start responding. Am I making my point clear? So how do you stimulate parasympathetic? Simple. Breathe out longer. Now most yoga teachers when they teach, sorry to all yoga teachers, most yoga teachers, when they say, Dirga Shwasan Karo, and they say, you'll see all these people <laughs> contorting their faces, you know, funnily, Mat Karo, you are doing exactly what you should be doing. You are contorting your face, you are stimulating, your sympathetic system is already stimulated. What they don't tell you is that not breathing in, but breathe out longer. Breathe out longer. So I'm going to teach you two methods of breathing and then we'll stop. Two methods of breathing, very simple, very, very simple. And so simple that nobody does it. It's so simple. Students come and say, write me a prescription which has no side effects. I say, thank you very much. If you don't want that, I'll teach you something which has zero side effect. Will you do that? I say, sir, time nahi hai. Then I say, you learn to breathe. And they say, oh, ah, sir, time name is that. I say, fine, okay. No time? Then take something with side effects. Okay, so, very, very simple. It's known as cyclical breathing. It's also known as box breathing, many names to it, box breathing. Let's start with simple box breathing and then we'll shift elsewhere. And if time permits, I'll give you one more clue, okay. So what is box breathing? Box is square, right? Square. So what do you do? Three uh, aspects of breathing. When you breathe in, hold and breathe out, right? Then take pause and again breathe in, breathe out. All four. So breathe in four counts. Hold four counts, breathe out four counts, stop for four counts. Again, breathe in four counts. So square, right? Becomes box. Let's do it. I'll just give you a count, right? I'll show you first. Just four counts. You can make it four, five, ten also. I have no issue. But all should be equal. Now, this is very, very important for anxiety. Because in anxiety, sympathy is going sky. Sympathy will come down. Right? So, box breathing, I'll just do two, three times. Just close your eyes so you can focus better. Simple box breathing, wonderful for anxiety. It just allows you to settle down. Right? Okay. Eyes closed because you can focus better, okay? Count, one, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Release, two, three, four. Stop, two, three, four. Start, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Release, two, three, four. Stop, two, three, four. Okay. Now, if you keep on doing this, after about five or six breaths, you'll suddenly say, that will happen to you. Because we are balancing it so well, the body says, I want more oxygen. So it just takes a long deep breath. No problem at all. So simple box breathing, when you lie down in bed and if you can't sleep, follow box breathing. Simple. Why? You'll say, how is that possible? Again, you are, what you're doing is you're creating a balance of sympathetic and parasympathetic. It's so, so simple. That's why I said it's so simple, nobody does it. Very simple. Box breathing. Right? Very well. Four sides equal. You can go according to your four, five counts, whatever you want to do. 
Next is little difficult known as 4, 6, 8. In which what you do is 4 count you breathe in, 6 counts you hold and 8 counts you breathe out. Now we will say why 8 count breathe out? Breathe in is sympathetic, hold is balance and 8 is parasympathetic, so 8 counts. Right? This is a cycle. Right? This is a cycle. So we keep on doing it. Right? I'll just show you. I'll just eyes closed. Four, six, eight. Right? Okay. Let's wait. Breathe in. Start. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six. Release. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe normally. Second cycle. Start. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six. Release. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? Yeah. Very simple. So simple. So simple. This simple idea of breathing out longer stimulates the parasympathetic system. Where is the parasympathetic system? It's only single nerve, vagus. Wonderful gift of God. Start from your brain stem, goes down, you support your vocal cords, that means speaking, breathing, goes in your alimentary system, goes right into your pelvis. Everything is managed by that one wonderful vagabond nerve, vagus. Many uh, videos you will get on vagal training. Some of them are sensible, some of them are not. You know, just understand it well and then do it. Okay, so this is last breathing that I'm going to teach you is called belly breathing. This actually when you start mindfulness, this is the second stage. So let's do it very simple. What you need to do is again strengthen the parasympathetic system. How do you do that? You do that by using a respiratory muscle which is normal. It's called diaphragm. Diaphragm is what separates the chest from the abdomen. It's like a ulti bowl. Bowl is called bowl shaped muscle, which is inside the body but is voluntary. That means you can change it the way you want it. Like breathing, you don't know your breathing, it is on autopilot, but you can change it with your own desire. Ye lamba karna, ye kam karna, so, what you do is, when you breathe out, understand, when you breathe out, pull in your stomach. So, when you pull in your stomach, what you are doing? You are pushing the diaphragm to push out all the air from the lungs. And then it is simple science, air pressure outside is more, Lung uh, pressure of air in the uh, lungs is low, so air is going to rush. So do it in fresh air. You can use eight counts, but make sure that you start the cycle by breathing out first. Many people get terribly confused. Pet kya karu samajhta nahi hai. Kuch nahi yaar, simple hai, so simple that you will not do it. So breathe out first. Because when you breathe out first, automatically breathing is going to happen. So let's do it. Hand on your abdomen. Hand on your abdomen. To feel it goes inside. To feel it goes inside. And breathe out through your mouth to learn. Later on through nose. Right? Gently.
Okay, simple breathe out, pulling in your stomach. Now, how do you practice this? A lot of research on this. You know, I am not going to talk about the research because it's too, you know, use PPT for that. Huge amount of research has done this. These simple methods of mindfulness have done tremendous transformation in the brain. In the brain, what has changed? This is uh, anterior cingulate gyrus, which is supposed to give you better concentration. Hippocampus gives better memory. Everything gets strengthened. There is known as neuroplasticity. That means the brain creates new connections, joins new dots. Like we learn, we are creating neuroplastic. The neuroplastic. As we grow, those who are playing instruments, wonderful neuroplastic. So you create new neuroplasticity, new connections. So you become, you start thinking in a different way. Your anxiety goes, but you also become smart. You innovate, you become more creative. That is all research on mindfulness has taught us this. That is not simple philosophy discovered 2,600 years back, but very, very true. Truly, it strengthens your memory, some masati. So these are simple ways you train your mindfulness. Become more and more aware of here. And when you breathe, you can breathe only for this moment. You can't say my fourth breath is going to be like this. Eighth breath is going to be like this. You know, Sachin Tendulkar, how, how does he play? He plays the ball that comes. He is not planning to play fifth four, mein, sixth ball. Na, tabhi usko boundary He is out, right? He looks at the ball and plays. So he's there. And when now? So when you do grounding, you are here. And you breathing, you are now. Because you can't breathe for the next minute. You can't breathe for the next moment. You are breathing now for this moment only, period. It stops. Moment to moment. So mindfulness is moment to moment awareness of where? Being here and now. And you do this without passing any judgment, right or wrong. Just do it the way it is. So definition becomes, without judgment, become aware of the present moment. No judgment. No, no, this is it. So this is about mindfulness. I mean, time, 5.33. So we have time for questions. Some time we'll talk, some questions that are there, I can. So, give me a very, uh, I made a canvas actually, thoda thoda, broad strokes. Yes, yes, yeah. Name, tell your name first. I'm Chanman. Chanman, you are a student? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, good. So, we have someone undergrad. <laughs> yeah. You get confused. That is wandering mind. It is so simple. So simple that we do it when we are infants. You see a baby and you will see her belly going up and down. Right? Baby, belly going up and down. So they do it actually. We forget and do it. There is not much right and wrong. Just do it. What is difficult? What is difficult? I says it's so simple that people don't know they're doing it right. We get this is a judgment, you know. You become judgmental about your barabari ki galate, ye de ki kya sahi fayda hoa ki ni hoga, barabar aega ki ni, kabi aega, right or wrong, you know, am, am I making mistake? Will it harm me? Breath has not harmed anyone. Normal breath has harmed no one. So just do it gently, aram se maza lelo, free, no tax, right? And freely available, no GST, nothing. And you are in this campus, I mean, a lot of oxygen provided. Ha ha. Okay, yeah, because you require training. You require training. So when you start breathing out slowly, you may not start with eight. 
you may do it six. Idea is make sure that it is little longer than the breathing, more than four. If four is count in, then it should be at least five, six. Yeah, so by practice we'll be able to do it. Four, six, eight. You can count your heartbeats also. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That way. If you can't count numbers, you can have a stopwatch and look at it and do it. I have trained myself. I can go on for four, six, eight. I can go on four, six, sixteen. Further twenty-four. Because I can really be, because we breathe out slowly. When you breathe out slowly, it lasts. Because you are using abdominal muscles. No, abdominal muscles. That's why I taught you the last one, belly breathing. Yeah, anyone else? Yep, yeah, good. Please, tell me your name. Good evening. Okay. Okay, okay. That's a great question. Meta awareness can be defined in very simple words awareness of awareness, consciousness. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Everyone has tried to define consciousness and nobody has been able to do it. It's simple terms consciousness is this brain's capacity to create self, I, that I exist, that is I am aware that I am here. So that I-ness, I, self can be called consciousness. But how does it conjure up? We don't know. We really don't know. The work is on. It's work in progress. Many, many theories, everyone from mathematics to AI to say it, name it and they have done it, you know. The spiritualists have been struggling with it for many, many years. Now scientists are struggling. Will artificial intelligence have consciousness? We don't know. We don't think it will have. Yeah. Can I ask my Somebody question? Else. Yes, yes, yes. please. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, sir, could you please tell, uh, I'm Narjas Asad, yes, I'm a PhD scholar. So, could you please tell us more about positive psychology? So, you said that it's about converting A to B. So, for example, if I am in a, like, I'm a married PhD scholar. Okay. So, our set of tensions and worries are uh -huh. like from home to everything. Yeah, yeah. So we tend to get worried about many things and uh, the first response of the mind is to go towards the extreme negative. Mm, Ki, oh mm. my God, aisa hua to kya hoga? Okay. we think of the okay. negative. Okay. Okay. Can you talk? Okay. Yeah, fine. That's okay. what that's what the mind is trained for. This is what the mind, this is how the mind works. It creates worse scenarios and tries to keep you ready for it. But this is like you know, an instinctive response. If things go wrong, what is going to happen? This scenario creating is the, is the habit of the human mind. Animals don't have this habit. Nobody has this habit. But we have this habit that we wander and create these situations. Now, the answer is anything is possible in the world. But in the world of statistics, you don't think of possibilities, you think of only probabilities. And when you ask what is possible and what is probable, you will get the right answer. And when that happens, very important, you understand this logically. You will understand this logically. I am just, want, my mind is wandering. So what mindfulness does is allows you not to hold on to that thought. What if thought, you know, what if scenario, what if scenario. We tend to get attached to that scenario because we are afraid of it. So fear holds it. So when you release it, it passes. No thought remains in the mind longer. Thought is a chemical reaction taking place in the brain. It comes and passes. What mindfulness tells you is that Thoughts are impermanent. 
thoughts are like waves. Waves come, hit the shore and go back. You don't have to get rid of your thoughts. They just automatically pass out of the mind. You let them pass. Stand near a river which is flowing and see the flow of the water. It continuously flows. So when you realize this, that I'm sticking myself to this, I'm in trouble. Say, ha, aise thoughts aate hai. Kya karna hai? Let them pass. Let them pass. And then slowly your mind will learn that I'm looking at something which is not steady. It is passing. It is passing. It is passing. It is passing. When you focus on your breath, you realize that I'm focused on my breath. And what do you, what is happening in the brain? What's happening in the mind? Many, many thoughts come and pass. When we do a full session of mindfulness, the answer will be actually can be practiced. Yeah. Yes. But so, it's a short answer to a very tough question. Yeah. Yeah. So my question had two parts. Okay. One is like when our mind uh, thinks that uh, like what if and goes to the extreme negative. The second is there are situations in life like some family problems, some yeah. things which we know that they are inherently negative. Hi hai. So, yeah. in such situation, ke saath, how, do I, how do we deal with that? Okay, there are situations... Being positive. Yeah, okay. Number one, what is my role in it? What is my role in it is very important. That means we need to classify things into two things. Number one, within my control and my concern. The more I am involved in the concern part, I am worried. When I'm more concerned, when I'm more in the control zone, I know I can control it. For example, I can control my breath, but I can't control my mother-in-law's breath. But she's not breathing properly, but that is my concern. So what I get is what I can control. So constant, ex constant endeavor is to identify what is within my control and what is my concern. Concern is going to be there. Third way. If you are really caught up in that mess, write down what if, literally, not on mobile, paper and pen, write down what if, all scenarios, everything. Look at it and use your probability. And out of 10 situations, there may be two situations which will say, I really need to be ready for it. Like everybody's insured here, right? Nobody knows who is going to die when. So there is no question of probability, a hundred percent. So what do you do? So you make a choice of something. What if then? What if then? So then is that insurance. So if you practice on what if then actually writing down, things will become easy. Because the moment you write down millions of things start changing. Essentially because you are involving your whole brain into the system. Next question. Yeah, hi sir. Yeah. Can I see you? Here, here. Okay. Here. Oh, yeah. You are wearing red shirt, so yeah. Sir. Yeah. Nobody looked at you, right? To when you wrote red. Okay. Please go ahead. Your name? Yeah, my name is Avinav. Okay. Yeah. Amitabh. You're yeah, so my, yeah, I am a PhD uh, a student from okay. Aerospace Department. Okay, okay. Yeah, sir, what I, I was willing to ask you that uh, there is one pranayam that is anulom vilom. Uh -huh. So in that pranayam, uh, somebody long back told me that you just inhale for a shorter time and exhale for a longer time. So does it also the same about that mindfulness? Anulom vilom is a different, uh, based on different kind of philosophy. Anulom Vilom is basically Nadi breathing. It is not just uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic. They have Surya Nadi and a Chandra Nadi. And we need to find out which Nadi is working. So we need to create a balance. You stimulate one side and release from the other side. The same side you breathe in again. So it's kind of a balancing act. Anulom Vilom is the Anulom Vilom is based on a Patanjali system of yoga abhyasa. So it doesn't actually come into the picture of talking about sympathetic and parasympathetic. Though it can be explained 
but they are more into nadi okay and uh, another thing sir that yeah stress uh, stress that is undesirable to us uh -huh. that is from outside we don't have any control on it because yeah. how environment will act on me i don't know but uh, what i do sir normally it happens to me because sometimes i get stress that i sometimes i burst into anger so okay. what i do that i try to take my thoughts away from that thing but sir it is not happening with me okay okay, okay. so you need to breathe in through your anger breathe in through your anger anger is a protective action that your mind has it's an aggressive action to self protect and that anger when ventilated not necessarily protects you not necessarily so anger management is again going back to the breath because anger is also a sympathetic activity sympathetic act parasympathetic is rest and digest calm and connect so you may say i don't want to think about it but your mind will still go so what do you do understand that this is anger this is an anger you i don't want to i don't want to work on the anger like i said i don't want to react i want to respond so what do i do i get some time to respond and not react how do i get time only when i am calm how do i become calm by breathing very difficult for an angry person easy for me to say are bhaiya tu saans le he will mere ko thappad marega wo right but that is possible only when you have trained if you have trained in breathing you will see anger coming and before it bursts you are already holding it very simple analogy that i use for anger is that when you are driving a smart driver is looking at a yellow signal not the red one amber signal says slow down red says stop green says go so most important signal is slow down if you understand that slow down you will be able to realize that next minute i may burst so let me stop this is what you have to learn slowly Okay. right slowly yes. and people say count 10 and you will people count 100 and burst out it's not counting 10 my dear it's not counting of numbers it's a counting of breaths samajhta nahi hai logon ko bolte hai ki 10 number 1000 number are hazar kya hai not numbers count your breaths and that will change yeah sir one last question okay. from my side <laughs> sir uh, when we tell that uh, there is one hardware and there is one software okay so from that perspective just uh, uh, in gita it says that our soul is like carrier tree and uh, uh, that is like carrier means our mind is like carrier so carrier tree drives the carrier matlab ghora jo hai usko so drive yeah. karta uh. hai us pe baithne wala to kya sir ye possible hai is it possible that our mind can be completely controlled by our body no we don't separate mind and body mind and body is one and the same two side of the same coin mind is function of the brain so how, is brain a body yes so it's a it's not this controlling that both helping each other synergistic action okay so my mind and body they are at best friends they are not mother in law daughter in law they are best friends they support they are they are helpful to each other so my body will tell what is breathing is body action helping what mind okay thank you thank yeah. you so much sir And these are question? these are you know these metaphors are used a lot just to explain these okay. are metaphors okay sir uh, what i think is uh, reaction is uh, come through the experience like uh, most of things when we react so uh, we react Uh, like something we experience based on this uh, response uh, so uh, going to reaction to response sometimes we don't believe uh, he is this response or no. yeah so, this is only by training i'll tell you what you know i'll give you a very ordinary example you know so when i was a child we had only two kinds of ice creams you know 
चॉकलेट एंड वेनीला नो कन्फ्यूजन राइट फाइट और फ्लाइट नो कन्फ्यूजन राइट पापा इज हैप्पी विल गिव यू चॉकलेट नॉट हैप्पी वेनीला कम बैक फिनिश्ड यू गोड बास्केट रॉबिन्स एंड आई एम टेरिबली कन्फ्यूज दिस वॉट सेम बास्केट रॉबिन्स इज ओ माय गॉड थ्री हंड्रेड वराइटीज एंड सेज दो नए हैवी सो वट डू आई डू इज अ स्मार्ट गाय इज थोड़ा देखो ना चक्के देखो टेस्ट करके देखो then you may go back to chocolate no problem but that's a choice that you are making but when what happens when you have to yeah you need to try different things you need to try no you have time you have time you have time when you are calm you have time when you are in calm state you are in a flow state it's a very freely flowing state you know thoughts appear you decide you hold you release them so much of awareness comes if a yogi ask him how long is iit from you know, kanjumark station he will not say i so many kilometers he will say 10000 breaths aware so awareness is the key awareness is the key yes la yeah. hello sir uh, my name is manohar manohar please so i am a staff over here so yes, i want sir. to ask uh, see as the situation comes when uh, we start thinking about things like what will happen this will happen and this things if it grows like going to the overthinking yeah right so how how do we control that or uh, give a line that okay this is where we have to stop see very simple overthinking makes you feel very anxious and anxious is what sticks to the mind you understand it is not thinking that matters overthinking is there that is why we have discovered chandrayaan wo sochte the kitne din right and then they discovered and they made it because they are overthinking people one simple question and they have 100 100 things about it that is creative overthinking what we indulge is anxious overthinking which doesn't lead anywhere so what we want to do is work on the anxiety not the overthinking so again go back to the same thing be aware that you are overthinking moment you are aware you can stop it so overthinking is called mindless activity mindless because the mind is on a autopilot right autopilot so overthinking you are not aware of what is happening so you are in mindless state and mindless state is so powerful that you don't know you are mindless when you are mindless you are so mindless that you don't know you are mindless so moment you know that i am mindless that's a moment i want to be mindful be here so you can do it you think aisa kaisa ho sakta hai but hota hai when you practice 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 you know people do it practice 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 now abhyas hai no to kaun the ye vairag gyan se kroya the detach yourself and practice so what ultimate कृष्णाज मैसेज टू अर्जुन मैं कैसे करूं नहीं बेटा तू करते रहा डोंट स्टॉप डूइंग इट अभ्यास है ना तो कौन थे रिच रेफ्रिजरेटर पर लिख के रखने का अभ्यास है ना तो कौन थे या सर लास्ट फ्यू क्वेश्चन या प्लीज गो है योर नेम आई एम अरुण अरुण यस अरुण यू आर अ स्टूडेंट नो आई एम अ पोस्ट डॉक फ्रॉम सी पोस्ट डॉक ओके गो हेड सो फॉर सम इंस्टेंस at uh, many points we need to trade off between attention and awareness attention and awareness attention is focused you are attending to me now this is attention hmm. right and if you don't get your answer you'll say ye kya bol raha hai samajh nahi raha hai so attention is already wavering but right now you can also see everything you are aware of the temperature aware of everything that is awareness which is generalized awareness but at some point we need to trade off for example aapne jo video dikhaya ha ha to agar maan lijiye main usme kuch incentive dal deta hu ki matlab uska target wahi tha ki kitne passes hue usko measure karna hai gorilla aaya ki gaya nahi aur background mein change hua ki nahi uske sath koi you have not been told to see it so you don't right. see it so i don't see it uh, so thing is that beta nothing wrong in not seeing a gorilla nothing wrong you know because this is a selective attention test so if you see a gorilla that also is good if you see gorilla not see a gorilla that is also good because it's about attention and awareness 
बचपन यू डोंट गेट हाई डिग्री हाई हंड्रेड परसेंट मार्क्स इफ यू सी गोरीरा नो नहीं ऐसे नहीं है यू आर बोथ अटेंशन एंड अवेयरनेस बोथ आर साइमल्टेनियस एक्चुअल इफ यू गो इन टू द डेफ यू नो इट्स ऑल्सो हाउ द हाउ अटेंशन एंड अवेयरनेस आर क्रिएटेड इन द ब्रेन इट्स टॉप डाउन और बॉटम्स अप सेंसेशन गोइंग फ्रॉम द बॉडी टू द ब्रेन एंड ब्रेन गिविंग ऑर्डर्स टू द बॉडी इसका बैलेंस है वो बहुत डीप है ठीक है बहुत डीप है बट दिस इज वॉट इट इज यू नो यू गो डिटेल्स डिटेल्स यूल सुन आई है पेपर ऑन दिस using uh, this so that paper is you will get in i am both gayas okay book i have written a paper on this Stacks. sir on the left top down up down sir ha right so the activities which we are doing on the daily basis ha uh ha -huh. repetitive activities goes on the autopilot over the period of time okay so should i force myself to concentrate mindfulness to generate while doing the activity so that i become more mindful you become more you are you are mindful of your activities so should and i you do like, with good good concentration should i force my mind to concentrate on these activities which yes. goes on autopilot when you want to do that you remain focused and you are in a not in just mindful state known as a flow state with stress free state you continue to work with with good concentration but due to the muscle memory or something which you are doing it it distracts you yes but so you, something else is going on in your mind but you are doing the activity because this activity you have been doing for so long that it has become yeah so do one thing I have a very clear idea whether this is relevant or irrelevant if it is irrelevant it can be ignored learn to ignore it learn to ignore it and you don't know how powerful your how powerful your mind is to ignore things not how we remember but how we ignore how we ignore is the power of the brain you understand you you are you are traveling in the uh, taxi train or something you see millions of you know, uh, visual uh, blocks whatever right visual bytes what do what what happens to them mind just ignores it in a flight there is so much of noise still people sleep are ab mumbai mein log khade khade sote they are sleeping on the platform i mean there is huge trains passing they don't wake up and not all of them are drunk so but uh, like that is the power of brain make sure that your brain is you have power to ignore it so i uh, think i am traveling from one place to other place Uh -huh. and I, there is a friend of mine he is also travelling at the end of the journey i figure out that he remembers each and everything which ha he has encountered during his journey okay. and i am in some other state that i don't know this has even come during my journey defined that means you see a gorilla you don't see a gorilla both are good enough if he wants to observe he is observing if you don't want to observe don't observe it's not like i am don't want to observe i am getting into that state of like not being in mindfulness like you train yourself like should i force myself because he don't force train yourself practice simple message 20 minutes dekha 20 20 minutes for 8 weeks ye trick maine wo picture hai na drishyam usse sikha 2 october bol de 20 minutes for 8 weeks practice this for 20 minutes for 8 weeks 20 minutes and you will learn it your brain will start changing practice believe it of practicing of practicing of this simple exercise that i showed you okay breathing in and out simple exercise your mind will start wavering in the second minute yaar train yourself yeah okay so like uh, especially in the last few years like there are a lot of like addictive technologies like so like uh, social media and uh, different apps and also like uh, does it have uh, like are the problems increasing because of those yeah or because there so many distractions so many distractions that it's very difficult to concentrate but understand distractions are created for them to make money अपना कुछ नहीं उसमें 
right? We gain nothing. They get a marketed target, right? He's what? IITN. This is age and this is friend list. These are his reaction that he has given, likes and dislikes. Bombard him with those advertisements. Utka business and we become, you know, slave of that. So be master of the social. The social media is our servant, not master. We are not slaves. We are not, we are masters. We own it. They can't rule our life. They, they borrow our time and own our time. We are not slaves. Pahle wo British log idhar the, we are their slaves. Now, invisible masters. Yeah, last question, I guess. Yeah. Okay. When we say we should uh, respond to our emotions uh, with the rest and the digest. So, uh, does it, uh, I mean, we are not suppressing our emotions and will it not hurt our body? No, no, no. You are not suppressing, you are letting them pass. Suppression is daba ke rakho. Right? When you let it pass. It's like in a dam, you hold the water behind the dam. So it creates more power. So let it flow. Breaking is pretty simple. I said right in the beginning, so simple that you will not do it. Hi, uh, myself, uh, Shemanti Mukherjee. I'm a PhD student here. So I often found found like if I write something, I can think better clearly. But if I am bound to answer right now, my thought process becomes cloudy. So how to deal with that? Uh... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Write it down. Take your own time. Okay. You can tell your guide also, sir. Give me a little more time. <laughs> And if he doesn't listen, bring him here. <laughs> Sir? Yep. One more question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sir, maybe the last one. Sir, um, ah, okay. if you get awake, it means after midnight. So, is it means you mentioned the body and the mind both are synergistic? Body know. and mind uh -huh. both are synergistic. So, uh, when, the, when there is sleeplessness, so does the body sleep or not? I didn't you, get, you get awake. Mind and body. See, the brain takes time to slowly settle down. There are almost six stages, five stages of brain to sleep. S sleep stage one, two, three, four. REM stage one, two, three, four. So sleep is a is a very complex subject. And when people are awakened, and it's not that the brain will immediately come to come to action. That's why we have this wavering activities during sleep. You don't wake up, your mind and body is not together. You want to scream, but you can't scream because the brain is not fully awake. So brain takes time slowly. <sighs> now it's uh, time to felicitate uh, Dr. Rajan Barve sir for uh, actually untiring a session and uh, delivering different steps and uh, giving inputs about the uh, mindfulness and also for uh, at different stages and different uh, what we can say uh, types of the meditations. They are very easy meditations so I hope that uh, the you guys will be benefited and uh, uh, make your practice regularly for uh, further benefits of your mind and soul and also for physical and uh, mental Help. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Now, Thank you. please be seated and uh, please have a. Uh... Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Such you a wonderful audience you have.